Hey, what's up, everybody? Pastor Seth here. Hi, everyone. It's Pam. Hey, thanks so much for joining us today. I'm so glad you guys are here this morning. Yes, and so, hey, we're here. We're celebrating today yeah, because know. guess what? It's Sunday. Sunday. That's what yes. Sunday yep. fun day. Great time to worship, to get together. Uh, but should we just wait for uh, Sunday? Should we be doing that you know, Monday through Saturday Monday as well? Through Saturday. But guess what? I'll be preaching in a few minutes, so I won't preach to you <laughs> now. Uh, but yeah, we're continuing to series Good Vibes today. And last weekend, uh, we had Bagel Fest, and it was so good. Oh, what a beautiful day. It was hot. It was so hot. Oh, so hot. Yeah. It was awesome. But it was. It was good. A great way just uh, with our community. Connecting so, with people. Absolutely. So those of you that served with us last week, yeah. hey, thank you so much. Thank those of you who couldn't so be much. there, but you're praying for us, thank you yes. so much. And we're grateful for you guys. and grateful for what God is doing here in Marcel and Sullivan County. Yes. Um, and so we love our county, and so we try to do things. That, uh, we do, yeah, do, as a family. You know, looking around, and you know, like we did the whole check out all the doves throughout Sullivan County, which if you haven't done it, go on the dove trail. Yep. And we challenged you guys on that earlier this summer. We haven't said much about it, but hey, the offer's still out there. If you go check out every single dove, take a picture of yourself with that dove, send it our way. We got a little something for you. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a fun thing to do. Um, but then one of the things that we did in our dove search is we actually were in Gramsville. Yeah, and that was um, holler at you people there up in Gramsville. I know some of you around that area. Um, and so we were there and discovered uh, that they hold the world's, world's lowest fair. fair. Yeah. Yes, and it's happening this weekend. So if you want a chance, you can go check it out today. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so we went and we were checking it out and uh, love love supporting our local community yeah. and love just taking the family out. That's fun. Yeah. yeah. So anyway. But talking about fears, and at this time of year, fears and carnivals, and you find them, you see them all over yeah, the place. That's true. And so here's my question for you. Okay. And maybe some of you have experienced working at a fair or a carnival. My some sister, of you have, my yeah. sister worked at, okay. at a fair. Okay. Yes, you know. Yeah. Yes, it is. World's hottest looking girl in this tent, and there was my sister. No, that wasn't what it was. No, she was serving out food or something like that. Yeah, I think she was doing food. Yeah, but <laughs> if you had a job or could have a job working at a, a, as a carny or working at a fair, what do you call it, fairy? Carney, fairy, I don't know what you're going to be here. A fair worker, um, you know, um, and, and what would you do or what would you want to do? What would you do? Or, or if would you have you certain secret to talents that you oh, would. Oh, that's yes. true. Yeah, Pam was like, I know what you would do at a carnival. I'm like, what what is it? She's like, I'm not going to, I'm going to tell you when we're recording. So uh, what what would you see me do at a carnival, Pam? Well, first of all, I just think that you would do really well at a carnival. As, as the muscle so, guy. You have so <sighs> many talents. Interesting talents, especially like you to know, build that weirdo over there. Is that what you're telling me? Yes, exactly. Yeah. What would you do? What would so you? So what would you do? Yeah. So you you're really good at making balloon animals. You know, doing the uh, we call that the juggling thing. Juggling. Doing the juggling, <laughs> juggling thing. The juggling thing. Uh, so you're saying I'm a clown? So okay. So what? That's a circus. I, Okay, I know. I said a, I told you this before. A circus and a carnival has similar things. Mm. But okay, so my thing would be for you. Is a character artist. Character artist. Character Drawing people. Artist. That's Drawing a really hard word to say. Character artist. Car caricature artist. Can't guarantee I'll look like you, but I'll have fun doing it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. He's very good at making characters. So that'd be cool. I'd love to do would that. Would you do that? Yeah, I, I think I, 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 I would do that. I think people would come to you. I think you would be the ticket Me? person. Oh, wow. Tickets, get your tickets. <laughs> you know, or you'd be people clean up over past other people's yes. kids. You know. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Or maybe no, I wouldn't mind doing any of the those auctioneer things. at the fair. Oof. Yes. I can't talk that fast. Oh, okay. I used oh to our daughter too. Genevieve would be the Genevieve auctioneer. Could do she that. can talk that fast. So, what would you do? <laughs> what would be your job at Carnival? If you had a job at some point at, at Carnival or Fair, drop okay. in the comments. We want to hear from you. What did you do? Or what would you like to do? And uh, come on, get us. Well, what about if you're not working at the fair, you're just going? What okay. Would you like to do? Yeah, I guess the question is like, what, what, what do you be doing? What would be the fair? first thing Checking you do? out the food. You know, you get fried everything. I know. Deep fried this, deep fried that, deep fried mm -hmm. Oreos, you know, yeah. deep fried, deep fried Oreos. Like it's been <laughs> exactly. double fried, like, you know. Or um, with the rides. I, the rides. Ferris wheel is not my favorite because it's really tall, but the kids love it, so we do it. And there's extra like risks in going on there a carnival is. ride <laughs> because those things, I don't know. Uh, temporary. Tips, yes. <laughs> so drop in the comments, love to hear from you. If you worked at a fair, what would you do or a carnival? Or if you're going to the fair, like if you're going to check it out today, what's one of the things you can't wait to that do? Maybe check out the animals, maybe yeah, check out the music that's being played. Pig. You know, a lot of times there's like our the craft pumpkin. fairs and stuff like that. Love to hear from you guys. Drop in the comments. Maybe the car show. I don't know what it is. Let us know. We want to hear from you Maybe guys. 
All right, stay in tune. Hey, we got this cool school drive happening yes. on August 28th. Uh, it's a Saturday. We're actually asking the community to bring us to school, uh, school supplies, and you guys can do so too. Go yep. check out rechurch.tv slash community on Perfect. that. Rechurch.tv slash community. All kinds of things, and right? we need volunteers that day to help us as people are dropping yep. off. Supporting those, our local schools? Yep, so those supplies. So check it out. Yep. All right, let us know. What would you be doing at the fair? All right, God bless you guys. Peace. Bye, guys. When the music fades and all the strips of gray, then I simply come. Longing just to breathe Something that's a good That will bless your home And I'll bring you more than a song For a song in itself Is not what you have required You search for steeper This is Janie, and I want to welcome you here online at Restoration Church. We exist to lead people to become fully engaged followers of Jesus. And if you are joining us for the first time, we are honored that you are with us. We would love to connect with you at 
rechurch.tv slash connect. We also want to thank you for your continued generosity here at Restoration, where we live to give. The easiest way you can give is by going to rechurch.tv slash give or text give to 845-209-1313. To get more information on how you can take the next steps here at Restoration, simply visit us at rechurch.tv. Thanks again for tuning in, and we hope this message today will be the peace and encouragement you need. What's up, everybody? Uh, thank you for joining us today at Restoration Church. Pastor Seth here, and we're so glad to be with you as we continue our series, Good Vibes. We've been spending the whole summer in the book of Proverbs, and so what we've been doing is reading through the book of Proverbs as a church, and then we've been taking different parts of Proverbs, uh, repeating themes, so to speak, of wisdom, and looking how we can apply it to our everyday lives, because the Bible is as relevant today as it was first written for us, and so it is. It's God's Word spoken to us. And so we're going to be looking today at an idea, we're going to be in Proverbs chapter 18, verse 24. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 24. Before I get to that verse, what we're going to be talking about is this idea of uh, better together. And one of our codes here at Restoration Church, you hear it say all the time, we've got the t-shirts that have it written on there, and it says, life is better together. And we truly believe that. We believe that life is meant to be together. God has built us as relationships, or for relationships. We're, we're relational people. Uh, we, we are built to uh, built to connect with others. Even you introverts, uh, God has built you for connection. Maybe not outgoing as some, you know, as, a, as social butterflies, but God has built you to connect with others as well. And we need it, and the church needs it, our community needs it. And so today I'm just talking about this idea of walking with me today. Life is truly better together. In fact, in Proverbs chapter 18, verse 24, it says that though there are friends who destroy each other, uh, but a real friend sticks closer to a brother. And I have to say, if you are around a quote-unquote friend who is tearing you down, then, you know, they're really not your friends. A true friend is one that sticks closer than a brother, one that's with you thick and thin. They're there with you no matter what's taking place in your life. They're praying for you. They're, they, they've got your back. They're in your corner. All those things, right? All right, and you know what true friends look like versus fake friends. And a lot of us have fake friends, you know, quote-unquote friends in our lives that really aren't our friends. And some of you look at your social media and all your friends, your likes, your followers, right? And how many people do you really truly know? And you know, and how many people do you really um, spend time with and you communicate back and forth with? Uh, it's probably a very limited basis on, you know, compared to who you would say your friend is on Facebook. And so we want to encourage you that uh, it's much better to establish real friendships and, 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 and relationships centered around God himself. Um, and, and it's beneficial, not, again, not just for you, but for that person and those around you. Because we are built to be around others. And I want to tell you this right now. Some of you need to hear this. All right. That you are wanted and you are believed in. You are wanted and you are believed in. And, and so you might have been told differently. You might be thinking differently. But you are truly wanted and you are believed in. And true friends, uh, stick closer to a brother. They're reminding you of that. They're reminding that you're wanted, that you're needed, that you've got purpose, and that, that you are believed in. There's something good about being believed in, right? When someone believes in you and your dreams and, and got you on that, you know, it, it gives us the motivation to fulfill the purpose that God's created for us. And God wants you and he believes in you and 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 he wants you to know that today no matter what you're going through he's created you to do truly great things uh yet the real attacks us left and right and try and destroy what god has has built up in the in the life of blessing and prosperity that he wants you to face today and so we have to understand when we have these friends that stay closer to their brother they're going to help us get through these times and, and times and and circumstances and and, and things that, that we are facing each and every day uh, I feel like this is 
example of a Lego and how many of you like Legos, um, you know, and, you know, grew up playing Legos and now you have kids, so it gives you an excuse to continue to play with Legos. That's where I'm at in life now. I, I love Legos, grew up playing Legos, and now I got kids who love Legos. And yes, we've gone to Legoland. And as a parent, you know, it's kind of cool because it's an excuse to go to Legoland and see all the cool creations, all the cool builds, right? Uh, maybe you've checked out Lego Masters on TV and seen these individuals, these teams coming up with these incredible builds. But here's the thing about Legos. In Legos, you know, you see these incredible builds and creations that are made, you know, and you go Legoland and they're larger than life. And, you know, it's so cool to see all that. But every single build starts with one brick. Every single build starts with one brick. And, and, and so it's, it's amazing, you know, when we talk about Legos, you know, we don't get excited about the one brick, the one piece. Maybe it, you get excited a little bit when that's a certain piece of brick that you're looking for. But what we're doing is we're not, oh, oh look, I have this piece and, and this is this is great. And you're not putting this on display. You know, you're not you don't go to, uh, you know, the toy store and, and you're, you're looking for a box. And on the outside of the box, they have just this. Oh, oh, look at that incredible build because it's not a build. It's a piece. And now look at us and, and as far as, as, as how God created us, he created us as a piece. All right. As, as a brick. And what he intended for us is to be able to connect with others, to make an ultimate, to build, to do incredible things. And so we are meant to connect with others. God has created us to connect, you know, and, and, and so it's, it's important to understand that. And every piece is important. Again, if you've ever been involved in a Lego build and, you know, you get everything almost together, you're missing that one last piece. It's like putting a puzzle together. You can't find a missing piece. It's aggravating. You know, you're searching and you're looking for it. Every single piece has a purpose. God has created you with purpose today. He's created you to connect with others. And then you are an important part of the build of what God has for you. Again, we are called to be the church wherever God, you know, has called us to be. And so we need to learn to connect. So Life is truly better together. Life is truly better together. We are made to connect with one another. And you have to understand, so God's created you with that purpose. So I want to challenge you to walk with me today. And I'm going to give you some, some, some ideas of how we need to do life together. And I need you to do it with me, church, right? I, this church, you know, and our community needs all of us, not just me. It needs all of us, all right? We are created to be built together and do incredible things. And so, so I need you to walk with me today. And so this is simply the first is this, is I need you to walk. I need others to walk with me. All right, life is better together. This church, this community needs us. And so we need to be able to walk together. We're doing this online. You know, uh, you know, we're, we're starting to meet back in person. And I encourage you, if you haven't gone in back in person with us, come on, we need you and you need us. We need you to connect with us. We need to connect with you, um, you know, and not to throw a guilt trip on anybody or throw some shade. But listen, I understand the hesitancy to get back into uh, meeting together in a group. And, and, you know, but listen, you know, we're going to Walmart and the grocery store and we're going to, you know, different things things where other people are at at what most important place is should we be going to is a church so we can connect with one another and yes we can do this somewhat online but it's very very small compared when we're actually in person there's something about it and so i'm going to challenge you to connect to i need others to walk with me we find this in the book of colossians chapter six or two verse six and seven it says just as you receive Christ Jesus the Lord, and says, so walk in Him. And so we need to walk in Him together. Walk with me. I need you to walk beside me. I need you to got my back. I need you, whatever it may be, you know, left to the right. And, and so when we walk together, we're strong together, and, and, and we can do incredible things together. I need you to walk with me. It's safer. When you're walking with someone, it's safer, it's supportive, and it's smarter. All right? There's strength in numbers. The strength in numbers. So when we're walking together, it's safer, it's supportive, and it's smarter. So let's walk together. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 14. It says, in the multitude of counselors, there's safety. It's safe to, to walk together. Proverbs 26, 12 says, only fools trust what they think alone is right. Okay, so there's wisdom and, and, and support in the process of walking together. Genesis chapter 2, verse 18 says, it's not good for man to be alone. You know, God says, listen. 
Listen, you're not. You're created to connect. You're created to connect with others. All right. Don't be that lone brick all by yourself. Okay. That's not the way God created you to be. All right. And and so we are created to connect. We're created for community. We're created, you know, for relationships. All right. So so let's learn to walk together. I need you. Personally speaking, I need you to walk with me. You know, and community honestly is this. There's a lot of people who are lonely today, uh, who are struggling. This past year and a half has, has been a hard go for, for, for all of us, right? And suddenly you're feeling lonely, you're feeling left out, you're feeling insecure, you're, you're dealing with all these things. And can I tell you that community is God's answer to loneliness. Community is God's answer to loneliness. So get involved in community today. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 16 says, As each part does its work, it helps the other parts grow. So Christ's whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. So, so the God, God's answer to loneliness is community. It's for us to connect. Now, I'm challenging you today to connect, get involved in community. All right, It's important not just for you, but others around you need it. I need it. All right, I'm being out flat on until you today, telling you, I need others to walk with me. I can't do this by myself. I need you and I want you and I believe in you, so let's walk together. Second is, uh, part of this is, uh, then I need people to, to uh, I need others to work with me. I need people, I need others to work with me. Again, there's a lot of work to be done. And we're not just talking about physical work. Yes, that's a big part of it. We're in the process of building renovation. And a lot of people, a lot of you have come and worked physically and gotten the blisters to prove it, right? And, and so so we need that type of work, you know, get the building renovated so we can start using and being in person there. But, but I need to do the work that God's called us to do, to share the gospel, to to be the witness, to, 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 uh, to be praying for all others, to, to be leading and, and, and taking on ministries. You know, we have a lot of work to do. Our community desperately needs us to step up. So I need people. I need others to work with me. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 says, God made us to do good works, which he planned in advance for us to live our lives all on. To do, do, that's what he created, created us to do, to connect, to do his work. I, I need others to do the work with me. Ephesians chapter 4, or Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 9 says, Two people are better than one because they get more done by working together. Say that. Work together. Say that again. Work together. Life is better together. We get more done when we're doing things together. Why? Because when one's slacking a little bit, the other can pick it up. The other can, hey, you got this. Encourage it. You know, it's incredible how much more you get done when you've got that person with you and you are working together. Two are definitely better than one. So let's start connecting today. I need people, I need others to work with me. All right. And we will, we will get more done. We will see more people come to, to accept Christ as their savior. We'll see the kingdom grow together when we work together. Listen, we are able to get into places that we won't be able to do on our own. We've got to do this together. We're going to be able to do things and get to places that we would never be able to achieve on our own. It's amazing when, when the body of Christ comes together and connects the way we're called to. Hebrews chapter 10 talks about this, verse 25. Don't forsake, don't neglect the assembling of yourselves together. So let's get together. Let's connect. We are longing for a community and, and, and you need that. And you might have the world telling you different and like, oh, you're cool. It's fine. You don't need that. There's other things you can do. Listen, no, you need it. God created you. He knows you best. He created you and he created you to connect. And we're not to be able to achieve things uh, on our own that we can do or, or when we're with someone else, when we connect, when we have that community uh, of the body of Christ together. Community is God's answer to fatigue, right? Community is God's answer to loneliness and it's answer to fatigue. It's tiring trying to do something on your own. And you all know what I'm talking about. When you're, when you're trying to do yard work, when you're trying to, to, to you know, take care of the kids, when you're trying to you know, just do your work, you know, <laughs> you know, have your place of employment, and when you kind of get this task and you're just doing it all your own and no one's there to help you out, fatigue sets in, right? No matter how good of a worker you are and how personally motivated you may be, the fatigue catches up. And community is God's answer to fatigue. You know, we're going to pick each other up, again, pick up the slack, be able to pray for each other, encourage each other, uh, be able to provide rest for each other. It's amazing. And communities, God's answer to fatigue. Every time uh, we get a chance, it says in Galatians chapter 6, it says every time that we get a chance, it says let's work the benefit of all, starting with the people closest to us and the community of faith. So we are a community of faith of believers, the body of Christ. Let's connect. Let's
Let's build each other up. Let's pick each other up when we're tired and when we're exhausted and when we're on a point of fatigue. Let's provide rest. Let's provide peace and joy in those situations. All right? I need, I need, I need you to walk with me. I need you to work with me. And in, 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 in life, I need others to watch out for me. All right? I need others to watch out. You know, I need people to say, I got your back, Pastor. And I need others to be watching out. You need others to be watching out for you, checking in on you, holding you accountable, making sure things are cool, making sure you're safe, making sure you're taken care of. That's the beauty of God's church. When we get together and someone is in need, you know, we're like, hey, I got you. Don't worry about groceries. Don't worry about meals. We're going to take care of that for you. Oh, prayer? Cool. We're praying for you right now. All right. You know, do you need me to come over and do anything? Do you need me to take care of your yard? Do you need me to take out the trash? Whatever it may be, the physical needs and then the spiritual needs, right? We're, we're watching out for each other. Philippians chapter 2 verse 4 talks and says, look out for one another's interests, not just your own. Again, when we are connected to the community, it becomes from being self selfish to selfless because it's not about us, it's about those around us, right? When you're building, you know, when you're making that build together, it's about every piece connecting in the right way and it gets stronger and stronger and stronger as you connect. As we, as the body of Christ, connects together, life is better together, we are going to get stronger and we'll be able to watch out for each other's interests, making sure we got each other, checking in the back, in the corner for them, whatever it takes. See, when we're on our own, it's easy to get defeated. Or at least feel like you're being defeated, right? Well, community is God's answers to defeat. God's, community is God's answer to defeat. Uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 10 says if one person falls another can reach out and, 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 and help but people who are alone when they are fall they're in real trouble right if you're all alone and you're somewhere and, you're, and you, you fall you're, you're in real trouble but when you got others around you help pick you up you know it could help you know provide provide you know assistance and, and, and getting to where you need to go next like you know community is God's answer to defeat all right so let's let's look at the walk of life alone but to connect with others. And then I need others to, to wait and weep with me. To wait and weep with me. Uh, and, and this idea is, is when, when, when we're struggling, when I'm struggling, it, 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 the Bible talks about us picking each other up in those areas as well. And if, if, you're, if you're having a hard time we, you know, and you're going through struggles, we want to go through those struggles with you. We might not understand the whole situation because you know, it's affecting you differently than us, but it does affect us, right? Because when, when you're hurting, we're hurting. You know, when you're hurting, I'm hurting, right? But that's the beauty of community. We're in this together. And so we can pick each other up. We can pray for each other. We can check in on each other. We can allow each other to, to you know, get a shoulder to cry on, you know, whatever it is. You know, let, we need, I need it. We all need, we need to be able to have people to wait and weep with us. I need others to wait and weep with me, you know, and go through those times and the struggles. Because when we go through the struggles together, guess what? When we gather struggles, we've grown closer and stronger together. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 26. If one member suffers, all suffer together. See, it's the body of Christ. We're in it. Okay, we're, 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 we are one and, 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 and under God. All right, we are sons and daughters of king of kings. All right, so we are going to do this together. All right, checking each other and, and, and being there for each other. Right, so we're going to need others to wait and weep with us. And, and when we don't have that, when we, we're trying to do this by ourselves, it's really easy to fall into despair and to, to, to just being agonizing over the situation. And again, community is God's answer to, this, to despair itself. It, it, community is God's answer to that. You know, and so he, he says, listen, you don't have to do this and go through this alone. All right, Romans chapter 12, verse 15 says, weep with those who weep. Okay, so we're going to weep with you, with you when you're having a tough time. We're going we're, we're, we're gonna to cry with you. We're going to, whatever it may be, all right? We're going to go through that with you so you don't have to go through it alone. And then we're not going to let you stay there either. We're going to walk through this together and see God, you know, take us through the whole situation. All right, so community is God's answer to despair. And then I also, then I need others to win with me. Come on, who likes to win? All right, all right. If that's you right now, drop a like in, in, in the comments or whatever. Give it a holler. Oh, that's me. I like to win. All right. And, and hashtag winning. I like to win. I'm very competitive and I, I, I like to win. Okay, so I'm trying to be a better, you know, loser in a sense of not be such a sore loser because I am competitive. But 
I think all of us, if we're, it doesn't matter how competitive or not, I think we all say, yeah, I, winning's cool. You know, I like to win. That's nice, right? Um, and I, I, I want others to win with me. Every time someone comes to know Jesus in our church and in our community because of the ministry of restoration, you are a part of it. You are a part of it. And you have to understand that's something, that, that's winning. Every time that we see a miracle take place, you know, you're a part of that win. Every time there's a breakthrough and someone, you know, in our, in our community is, is broke through addiction or the marriage has come back together or whatever it may be, we have done that together. And I want you to be with me when we celebrate those victories. I want you to win with me. Right? I, I want us to be able to celebrate together and, and, and enjoy the, 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 those moments that God gives us. All right. And so I want others to win with me. I want others to win with us as a church. Romans 12, 15 says, rejoice with those who rejoice. Come on, let's celebrate other people's wins. Right? We get, we get stuck in a comparison game all the time. And it's like, oh, I wish I was, my life was more like this. And I wish I, that was happening to me. And why do they get the new car? Why do they get this job? And why do they, you know, to, instead of doing that, here's a way to change your perspective. All right, simply celebrate with them. When someone is, uh, happens with great to someone else besides you, just say, dude, that's awesome. That's so cool. Look at God go and cheer them on. And when you come in with a celebration and when you start winning with them, you know, guess what? God just like takes that comparison junk out of your life and, and it, it feels really good. And don't worry because your wins are coming. All right, so flip the script, change the perspective, and learn to win with others and, 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 and celebrate others' victories. And then they're going to be in your corner too, and they're going to be cheering you on and say, that's so awesome. I want you to win with me. See, we need encouragement, and community is God's answer to that. So let's win together. Let's encourage one another. Let's build each other up. We need that. We're in a world full of news each and every day is coming that's depressing, that's, oh my goodness, what's going to happen? It's discouraging. You don't know what's going to, you know, what tomorrow holds. And guess what? We don't, but God does. And so community is God's answer to encouragement. And so if, if one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. Someone wins, we all win. All right, let's rejoice in that. And understand that there's why we need to be in person. And I'm, I'm encouraging you to get involved in small group that our regroups are taking place and starting back up in the fall. Come out to our in-person service whenever it's offered. Get involved in, in some volunteer or community dream team opportunity that might be available. You know, come out and connect. It's so important. You know, good. What we're doing here online, awesome. All right, I love it. You know, and if you're watching somewhere and you're not in our local community, I would encourage you as much as we appreciate you being on with us today, find a local church that you can physically connect with and get involved with. And trust me, you're going to love it because that's the way God has built us for. All right, so we are created for connection. We're created for community. Let's win together. And then I need others. And all this process we're talking about, I, I need others to walk with me. I need, I need others to work with me. I need, I need others to, to watch out, to look out for me. I need others to wait and weep. I need others to, to win with me. And then I need others to witness with me. I need others to witness with me, all right? You know, this is, again, we, 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 we have a job to do. We have the gospel to spread and to share. And I need others to witness that with me. John, John chapter 13, verse 35 says this. says, your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. Your love for one another. So when people see us connect in a healthy way in community that the church is building together, a strong foundation, that alone itself is a testimony. It's a witness, Again, and, and so, yeah, you can go out as, as a lonely brick and go share the gospel. And, 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 and because the gospel is in itself is, is life changing. Right. But when we work together as a community and we build it together, people tend to know this a little bit more. It draws their interest. What's going on? You know, just the other week we had a prayer walk, you know, and we we're going up and down Broadway and there's probably like 15 of us. And, you know, and I was like, you know, there's a good group of us. I said, maybe we should just split in two groups. And um, one of our, our, our guys they spoke up as a pastor said, that's, that's fine. But, you know, big crowds, you know, draw people's interest. And I'm like, you're absolutely, absolutely right. And so we just as a group went together up and down Broadway and it did. 
People were watching us across the street as a big group, and as we're going down, it drew people's attention, and we stopped and prayed, and it was noticeable because there's 15 people, the heads bowed, and 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 so so communities needed, and and we need this, uh, we need others to witness together and, and be a witness just by our testimony, by our walk. That's why I need you to walk with me and then celebrate those wins together. And so it's it's it's, it's much needed, and it's encouraging not just to me but the church family and to our community. And we we live in a broken world, a broken families and broken people and they're looking for something that's healthy and whole so let's be a healthy and whole church and let's build our lives together i need others to, to witness with me and to be what god's called us to be and, and our love for one another the bible says will prove to those around us that we are his disciples that we are followers of jesus and maybe some of you are fearful about some things today Maybe that's why you're holding back. That's why you haven't got back involved. I, I, I don't know what that is. Maybe that's why you're not actively witnessing and sharing the gospel. Fear is a real thing. I get it. We all have different fears and different situations, you know, and, and based off the situations that we face in our life, right? A lot of those fears, um, you know, come from something, stem from something. But can I tell you, God's answer to fear is community. God's answer to fear is community. Uh, Philippians chapter chapter 1 verse 27 says you're working together and you're struggling okay side by side to get others to believe the good news all right we we're working together life is better together and we are struggling yeah I might be struggling you might be struggling but we're struggling together side by side so others can believe the good news the gospel what we have to offer to others and we'll be able to get past our fears together when we do this again there's boldness it, 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 it is a credible thing. It's the way God has created us. See, listen, you need, need it, we need it, our church needs this, and our community needs it, and it's counting on us to be the church that God's called us to be, to connect. I'm challenging you today to connect, to be the church that God's called you to be. Be the church, right? Whether we're indoors, you know, and celebrating our new building together. We're outdoors and, and the sun, and, you know, we're celebrating and, and worshiping in person. Uh, we're in homes, you know, doing small groups. Uh, we're on the streets witnessing uh, or praying for our community. Uh, we're serving food, you know, at the local homeless center. Uh, we're you know, collecting school supplies, whatever it may be. Let's be the church together. Our community is counting on it. And God is calling you to it. Life is better together. So will you walk with me today? Life is better together. Are you ready to connect? You were built for connection. You created God's image. God is a very relational God. He's built you to, have, to be relational with others. So let's step up and out of our fears, out of whatever's holding us back, saying, God, I'm willing to walk today. Will you walk with me? challenge to that today. Let's pray. God, thank you for all you do for us and for all those who are watching. I pray today that we learn to connect, that life is truly better together. We are created for that. As a church, we are stronger together. We can encourage each other, pick each other up, Lord, watch each other's back, cheer each other in, celebrate the victories together, Lord, and just be able to be the witnesses that you've called us to be. And Lord, I pray that, I, and I know our community desperately needs us to step up and stand up for what is right, stand up for righteousness, Lord, and to do so with boldness, without fear, being able to just not worry about what the world has to say or, or think, and just focus on you and what you've called us to do. Thank you for our church, our community. Thank you for everyone who's watching today. I pray you encourage them, challenge them to step up, to walk with us, Lord. If there's anyone here watching today, they don't know you as your personal Savior, they're, they're willing to take that first step and receive you in their lives, Lord, and cry out to you say, say, God, I need you. I believe in you. I accept your son, Jesus, as my Savior, as a forgiver of my sins. I ask him to come to my life, to come to make me whole, to change my life forever, Lord, and so I can enter into a relationship with you, Lord, so I can walk in you and your ways today. God, thank you for everything you do. We love you in your name. Amen. Hey, guys, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for being a part of our community. And we encourage you and challenge you to connect. Thank you for your, your, your amazing generosity. Thank you for stepping up. Last week's Bagel Fest was awesome. Thank you for all the volunteers that made it happen and, and loving on our community. So let's look at 
intentionally at ways to connect this week. That's the challenge. How can you relationally, relationally connect with someone this week? Listen, if you're watching, if you'd like to know more about having that relationship with Jesus, go to rechurch.tv slash follow Jesus, rechurch.tv slash follow Jesus, and we'll love to walk with you in that journey. It's so exciting. And so, guys, love you. I'm looking forward to being with you real soon. And hey, look for ways to connect today. God bless. Thank you for joining us today. If you are new with us or you said yes to Jesus today, connect with us at rechurch.tv slash online. Let us know how we can pray for you at rechurch.tv slash prayer. And thank you for your continued generosity. We give out of the overflow of our heart. Giving is an act of worship that expresses our gratitude, faith, and love for others. You can give by texting give to 845-209-1313 or online at rechurch.tv slash give. To keep updated on what's happening here at Restoration, text RECHURCH to 84576 or visit us at rechurch.tv. 